Hello and welcome back to the Rambling Movie Podcast, where each time I suggest a movie and then we come back and talk about what works, what doesn't. Uh, this week's movie was Shazam, which was the recent DC movie uh, with Zachary Levi and the classic uh, superhero stuff. I'm deliberately staying vague during the introduction because I'm going to be going to heavy spoilers. Um, so if you haven't seen it and you're not really sure how this podcast works, I am going to go into full spoilers for the movie. So if you are holding out, maybe don't listen to this podcast. But to be honest, it's kind of predictable, so there's not really that much to spoil. So from the start, I should probably say I quite like the movie. I haven't really been a fan of the recent DC ones, and with the Marvel ones, I kind of go in and out on which ones I like. I don't like most of them, to be honest, um, but there's a few that kind of stand out. Obviously, I like the Dark Knight trilogy. Well, that's Christopher Nolan, so it's a bit different. But with the DC stuff, Wonder Woman was okay. Man of Steel was a bit meh. I watched like half of Batman vs. Superman. I've tried rewatching it a few times, and every time I get like 10 minutes in, I just get bored. Um, and I haven't watched Justice League or Aquaman. And I was really looking forward to this. When it got announced, I was like, ah, I'm not really sure. But then when I saw the trailers, I was like, yes, like this is exactly what I wanted to see. And then when I saw the movie, I was like really pleasantly surprised that it was exactly what I thought it would be. If you haven't seen it, basically, uh, it's all about this kid called Billy Batson, who's just an ordinary kid, but he's kind of on the run because he lost his mum when he was a kid, and uh, he's constantly jumping between foster families while he's trying to find his mum again. And then he finds his foster family and gets given superpowers. And his foster family are like some of the best characters in the movie, like. Billy Batson, the kid version, is really annoying. He's just like a moody teenager who's like, no one understands me. The adult version is much more fun. He's almost like a completely different character, which is kind of like conflicting because just they're supposed to be playing the same person but they're not so yeah but the foster family's great freddy who's the one who's like spends most of his time with shazam and billy uh, he's pretty great and i quite like his like dynamic with billy especially the way like he calls him out when he's kind of being a dick and like isn't using his powers for good and freddy's like i would kill to like have your powers like i thought it was a really cool moment and like kind of keeps him in check and the other one is dala like dala is great i think dala's probably the best character in like the whole movie because like she just like steals like every scene that she's in like the bit when and uh, Billy goes into her room as Shazam and they're trying to hide him and she's like, what the hell? And they just keep her quiet and then later on when they, all the others figure out that uh, Billy is Shazam, she's like, I'm the best sister. Like, I didn't tell you anything. And I was like, that's pretty cool. The other kids, like, kind of, they, you don't see that much of them so you don't really get to know them. The oldest one, I don't even know her name. She's probably the one you see, like, the third most but again she's only in it for like a couple of scenes so yeah but the parents were really good like straight from the start you felt really like safe and trusting with them when they were like straight away billy was like we know what you're going through like just take your time like we're here for you if you want us and if not like that's okay kind of thing but like just please stay with us we want to look after you kind of thing and then like they like genuinely have funny moments as well which i thought was really cool i thought they'd be really cringy but again they're not like they kind of like subverted my expectations with that which yeah that was really cool and of course my favorite moment with the family was how right at the end they all got powers um and you kind of see them all like souped up too and how they're like whoa like and like, especially seeing like dala like when she goes up to santa and it's like oh this is what i want for christmas santa's like what the hell is going on like why is this superwoman like trying to talk to me and also the fact that like freddy is like flying like every chance he can get like because he just loves the superpowers so much so i thought that was really cool and i also quite like how this goes in a different direction from previous dc movies so like like man of steel batman vs superman justice league wonder woman was kind of the exception and aquaman are definitely the exception but like the others are very dark and very serious but they're not like trying to do it properly like things like the dark knight like when this it's like oh my god i'm batman i'm dark and brooding like because i'm batman i have to be dark and brooding and like superman's like almost copying that for a bit and it's like Ugh, no like that's not what you want to see in a movie it's just depressing to watch whereas this like this is genuinely funny but it keeps his dark tone still but also does the dark tone in a much better way for me like it's very similar to the 90s batman tv shows and like superman tv shows like that they were like the best dc stuff i've ever seen pretty much with a few exceptions obviously but they were like they got the dc tone perfect whereas like marvel goes very silly and happy dc has like happy moments and like jokes and stuff but then also has this like dark edge but it's also very personal dark the best way i can compare it is kind of like in batman vs superman batman's like oh my god this guy's gonna come and kill the world and i'm gonna have to kill people in this uh, dark dream that i have whereas in this like the dark moment is the twist when billy finally meets his mum and she's like i never wanted you i was a teenager who couldn't handle having a kid and it's like that's so much more real and relatable and so like you can really feel the like darkness to it whereas again like going back to the batman uh, situation 
you're like, I don't get this. Like, I'm not going to have to fight an unstoppable monster who's trying to take over the world or whatever. Whereas you can almost understand what it would be like to be in Billy's situation after all those years. And then also building on that, um, the whole movie has a message of the fact that, like, you can choose your family and also, like, you're stronger when you stick with them. Like, that was kind of the big moment at the end, like, when he... Uh, gives the powers to the family whereas again like the other DC movies and even most of the Marvel movies to be honest don't really have a message I can't think of one off the top of my head that does have a message that was really nice to see because again like when you go back to like the old DC cartoons I say old 90s DC cartoon again like they had a lot of message like Batman was all about how you should overcome your fears and like working together with a family like when he brings in things like Batgirl and like Robin and stuff whereas most of the DC movies and again like most superhero movies nowadays are just kind of like it's a story and some of the, the stories are fun and great to watch and stuff but they don't really have a message behind them so I really like that about Shazam but of course it wasn't all roses and sunshine I did have a few problems with the movie but like I said I did really like it problems I had were the bad guy was a bit lame I do really like Mark Strong but his American accent was a bit bad like he kept slipping into like Scottish slash British English and like it was just a bit jarring for me and also his whole thing where he's just like, like again his story is quite dark dad's like a bit of a dick to him well I said bit of a dick it's like pretty horrible to him but and then he gets rejected by this wizard who the wizard keeps rejecting like every kid that he gets like can no one meet his expectations like shouldn't he be trying to screen these people better like, he's got a magic staff that can go out and find the best candidates and yet they all turn out to be wrong like yeah so the wizard's kind of a dick to him which you kind of get but then also it just comes off a bit lame like it's just like eh so oh also i super thought when uh, billy's trying to take the magic out of his eye i thought he was gonna like rip out his eye and i was like I was like, this is going to take a really dark turn, but no, it didn't. Which I think could have been a bit too much if they had actually gone that way, but so I'm glad they didn't. But yeah, the bad guy in the end was just kind of meh. The only thing I did really like about the with the bad guy was uh, when he's doing his bad guy monologue when they're fighting and they're like a few hundred meters apart and Billy's like, are you talking? Like, it's like, that was really funny. The one thing I don't get though is with the demons, the demons have been locked up for like all these years. It's never explained how long. But they've been locked up and then they just follow him around the whole time like they never go on like a rampage or anything you think they want to like break loose but they they just they don't like they just follow him around like yep we'll trash a boardroom and beat up these evil business people but that's about it and it's like surely they wanted some freedom like let's go nuts like let's kill some people like let's cause some chaos but no the other one is i feel like the movie went to big efforts to emphasize the number seven the wizarding number like the fact that the wizard is the last one of seven demons the seven demons uh, Billy's mum lives on the seventh apartment on the seventh floor. Like, there's all these sevens, but then there's only six foster kids. Like, why isn't there seven? I was watching it, and I was like, every time I count, I was like, there's six, there's definitely six. And I'm just like, and then when I get the powers, like, there's still six. Like, what, what's going on? Like, there should be seven. Like, you emphasize seven so many times, but, like, you don't have seven foster kids. So I'm wondering, like, is there going to be a seventh one in the next movie? Maybe? I don't know. Also, why is Billy chosen to be Shazam? Like, he does one good deed. Like, he runs from people, he steals a cop car. Oh no, he doesn't steal it. He locks the cops in the shop so that he can, like, check their computer database and steals his lunch. And uh, then he happens to save one of his foster kids. Like, I get it, the wizard was, like, out of time, but, like, surely he could have just gone to one of his previous candidates and be like, look, you, I know you kind of took the demon eye thing, but, like you were better than Billy. Like, at least you did a lot of good deeds. I get you that you're like seven, but yeah, I just felt like it's kind of an odd choice. I kind of picking holes here, but yeah. Um, the other thing as well, the post credit scene with the caterpillar. Like, I didn't really get it. Uh, I get it, like, that they want to build a sequel. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with the sequel, especially when you've got these six superpowered people. Like, it's kind of like you need to like top that like to have like a worthy threat could be tricky but it could be interesting to see but yeah the post credit caterpillar and i was just like is this magic caterpillar like what's going on here like yeah it's a bit weird i am really looking forward to kind of see what they are going to do next because like this movie's been pretty successful so they just definitely gonna have a sequel and i hope that they kind of keep going with this tone for the rest of the dc movies they haven't really i think the only ones that have been announced is wonder woman the one from 1984 or whatever it is i think that's all that's been announced so it could be interesting to see, like, who they're going to go next. It wouldn't surprise me if they try and push Black Adam next with The Rock, just to try and, like, again, go to the more, like, family fun tone. Oh, and speaking of famous characters, the end of the movie was brilliant, like, where uh, you've got Freddy, and then all the, the family comes sit with him, and you're like, oh, that's really cute. And you're like, where's Billy? And then he comes in the Shazam, and you're just like, oh, he's such a good brother, like, oh. And he's like, but where are my friend with me? And you're like, what? A friend? And I knew I'd had it spoiled for me that Superman was in the movie, that he had a cameo. And like the whole time through the movie, I was trying to guess when he comes in. And I was like, is it now? No. Nope. Like maybe he stops the bus? No. Nope. Uh, maybe he comes in and gives Shazam a lesson to convince him to go back to his brother and like be a good hero? 
No. When it got to like towards the end, they defeated all the bad guys, and I was like, "Where's Superman?" I was like, "Oh, he must just be in the post-credit thing." And then he pops up there. And I was like, "I was not expecting that." Like, I thought it was really cool. And you can see how it would have been better with Henry Cavill. It's a shame it didn't work out, but. Yeah, it was really good and like quite a like grinning moment. I'd say cheesy, but it's not cheesy. I, I was grinning the whole time. I was just like, oh, this is great. <laughs> like the looks on those kids' faces, like especially uh, Freddy when he's just like, oh my god, Superman's here, like my hero. So uh, yeah, that was Shazam. Um, I hope you liked it too. Feel free to let me know what you think of it on Instagram. You can find me as the Rambling Movie Club. Come say hi and you know let me know what you think of it. So the next movie we're going to watch is Avengers Endgame because everyone on the planet is talking about it right now and I'm quite curious to see kind of how the Marvel movies finish. If you've missed Avengers altogether and don't know what Endgame is, Endgame probably isn't for you. Basically, Endgame is the sequel to Avengers Infinity War that came out last year and it's kind of like the finale of like the last 22 years not 22 years, 22 movies of Marvel movies. So it's kind of a bad jumping in point, but if you want to try and like binge all the Avengers and Marvel movies in like two weeks, like go nuts, but good luck to you. Um, I'm also making sure this uh, podcast comes out a couple of weeks after the Endgame premiere because I'm not seeing it straight away and also I always hate when podcasts come out like, and like videos come out like the day it comes out, like for Shazam, there was stuff coming out the day before it was even out in my town and like in my country, so it's just like, it's a bit unfair, so I'm kind of like making sure, I'm aiming for about two weeks after the Endgame uh, release date, so it should be a bit better. But yeah, thank you for listening. As I said, you can find me on Instagram as the Rambling Movie Club, and I will see you next time.